What's going on? We're going to talk about race mixing and the intermingling of the cultures. But first, before we get into that, I need to share a story with you. Years ago, I was just a regular dude, didn't know anything, and I had figured out how to get a job at Rent a Crate, and I had figured out how to get a job at Panel Systems, and I got a job at Business Environments, and this is where I was introduced to the corporate game by a white dude. This is an older white dude. He was really friendly. He come in my office, we chat, and he schooled me on corporate game, holding companies. He schooled me on the whole nine. And if I had not met this dude, or if I had been insular and like, well, you know, I ain't gonna talk to no white dudes, I would have never learned this corporate game, which to the tune, because I just did the math, from the selling of the art of holding, I've made close to a million dollars. From corporate game that I was got from a white dude. And you know, hats off and I really appreciate you, Fred. And I need to say this because there is this notion that so many black folks are like, I'm not going to mix or intermingle with white people. I'm just not going to do it. And I'm going to illustrate something to you why that is harmful. And I don't care if the Hotep army comes for me with pitchforks and their Annikas, but I'm a part of a YouTube mastermind and I have learned so much. Savage Finance, which will, will be six months old, August 19th is on par to make more AdSense money and to get more views than this channel. Cause I have to really work this channel to make decent money from AdSense. And then there's the consultings and the course sales. Um, Savage Finance is on track to probably do 30 to 40,000 this month, including everything. And it's really still small. I think I've got like eight, I'm close to 9,000 subscribers. So when Savage Finance gets to 100,000 subscribers, that channel should be making maybe, maybe close to a mil a month. I want you to think about it. Now, I bring this up because I'm a part of this YouTube mastermind that has taught me all of this stuff that I would have not figured out on my own. There is this arrogance in the black culture that, hey, I will figure it out on my own. I, I've got some people in the audience who refuse to buy a course. If there's some free, they up on it, but they refuse to buy anything because they figure that they're just as smart as me. And I'm here to tell you that if you were smart as I am, you would be living as I am. If you are not paying cash for cars, have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank, and if you're not living in a million dollar house in a million dollar neighborhood, you're not as smart as me. Facts. I know that sounds elitist, but like I said in the last video, I'm an elitist motherfucker. Facts. If your receipts do not look like my receipts, you are not as smart as me. I know that hurts your feminine male heart because typically that's what it is. It's the feminine men who feel that we're kind of equal because we're we're, we're both black. Well, he's a black man. I'm a black man. Therefore, we're equal. Nothing could be closer to the truth. And this is one of the things that I feel that is keeping many people in the black community. I got this beautiful comment from a progressive black on the video talking about marrying black women will not change the culture. And he was talking about the things he went through, the things he taught his son and how he raised his son and his son's a doctor. This is the kind of comments I get from progressive blacks, but regressive blacks, he said, you shouldn't marry a black woman. Blast from me. We need to kick him out of the group. We need to go ahead and pull his car, his black card. How dare he say such a thing? And you're going on and on and on about things that don't make any money, that will not change the condition of the black community, that will not enhance the community. And there's this circular argument that will go on all day. Because essentially, if you are butt hurt and stupid and very feminine, I'm not going to debate you in the comments back and forth. I'm just going to block you and tell you what I think of you and keep it moving. Because this is one of the biggest issues. You have so many people, the AKA the black marketing department, that knows how white people live, but have no white friends, no interactions with white people. And this is the thing. 
I am saying, yes, go out and mix with white people. Yes, go out and mix with Jewish people. Yes, go out and mix with Asian people. I got a little story time for you. Years and years ago, I was when I first started the YouTube thing, I used to continue to sell on Craigslist. And I was selling a MacBook computer. And I was like, I got this response from this chick and she was like, oh, okay. And I said, well, we can meet at the white windmill. And then she got like really happy. She said, oh, you Asian? I said, no, but I love that bakery. It's one of the best bakeries. So we met there and this it, little Asian chick showed up. She's cute as she wants to be. She went ahead, did what she needed to do on the computer, make sure it worked out, handed me my money. Then a week later, I get a phone call from this chick. She's like, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. She said, you have a girlfriend? I was like, no. You want to go out? And I was like, bet. Now, let me tell you, the White Windmill, which is on Buford Highway, up the street from the Krispy Kreme, it, they built this, uh, I used to live in Dunwoody. I remember when they was building it. And I would go in there all the time because they had super fast Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi, and I, in the beginning, was the only non-Asian person in there. Did these Asian people talk bad about me? No. I remember one time I went in there and it was really, really crowded. And there was these middle-aged Asian ladies having whatever they have, a meeting. If you're Asian, you know what they were doing. Talk about it, put it in the comments. But they were having a meeting. And then one Asian woman saw I was looking for a seat and she's like, huh? Oh. And she pulled out the chair for me. That is how I have been treated by non-black people, white people, Asian people, nothing but respect and kindness. And you know, there, there's some of you who are so scared and so sensitive that someone's gonna say something slick to you that you just refuse and shut yourself off from intermingling with non-black people. I was dating this black chick. Oh my God. She was, she was Louis Fer she was the female version of Louis Farrakhan. Oh, she was a teacher. She would not uh, mix and mingle with her white uh, co-teacher. She, she just wouldn't do it. And I was like, well, they got this event. She's like, ain't nothing there but white people. And I was like, what, what is the big problem? And then she's like, you want me to go mix with those white people? I mean, she was a teacher. They were teachers and they were having meetings and she actively refused to participate. She actively refused to get to know these people. She actively refused to even sit down with them. And there are a lot of you who are just like that, who are sitting around with your lips stuck out, talking about white supremacy, and you actually refuse to get to know people on the human and organic level. And this is a huge, huge problem with non-progressive blacks. The progressive blacks, they're going to the bar with Tommy, Biff, Sheila, and teeny they're they're going out there and tucker they're hanging out with tucker i had a friend and he was from the islands so he had a different perspective and his running partners were three white guys and the asian dude and he was black and they would go out and have fun and they were like the best of friends and you know we were friends and we would talk and he, he one day he said, you know, you're the only one that doesn't give me grief about me hanging out with th my friends. I said, what do you mean? He says, yeah, I talked to other black folks. I was like, why are you hanging out with that Asian dude? Why are you hanging out with those white people? He's like, you're the only one that's never even brought it up. I was like, I don't really care. I mean, if you're hanging in with your boys, your boys, your boys got your back. He's like, yeah, I mean, they're my best friends. I mean, they've been for me. They, they've lent me money. He's like, hey, do what you need to do. But once again, I, I, it, it's the black people marketing department. It's like, oh, you should not be hanging with white people. No, no, no. And I'm not talking about marrying people. I'm talking about just being friends. Going to the cookout. Oh, I'm not going. I went to some white people at the barbecue. The food was delicious. There are all these jokes. And if you would look at the black people marketing department, it's about seasoning of food, knowing the latest dance moves, uh, having the appropriate cultural response. Nothing about making any damn money. Nothing, nothing. It's all the foolishness and petty crap that the black marketing department's on. Cause uh, there was another black chick I was dating and she was from Chicago. She was from the shy. 
And this chick was an attorney. And we were talking about, we, there was some person we was talking about, and she was like, well, yeah, you had to kill him because it was all about respect. This woman had been educated, was an attorney, and she was still steeped in the ghetto culture. Steeped in it, dipped in it. She understood the new hood rules, hood code, even though she was a corporate lawyer. She clung to that. She clung to that. And I've, I've had some comments, it's like, well, man, most black folks are not like that. Really? If most black folks are not like that, how come black folks who've never interacted with me before feel it's perfectly acceptable and cool to use the N word with me? If most black folks ain't like that. The negative, the broke, the disenchanted, the disenfranchised, the ghetto hood culture, rap culture is the largest segment of the black community. I know y'all don't want to hear that because you, you think, well, everyone is like me. No, they're not. That is the largest segment of the black community and is getting larger because of the proliferation of single motherhood. How many single motherhoods, like, you know, there are no single mothers in this neighborhood. They can't afford a million dollar house as a single mother unless, you know, she was married to a millionaire and then she's getting alimony and massive child support. That's the only way she's gonna really, really be able to float this off in this neighborhood. I don't see no single mothers around here. I see housewives, I see wives. I don't see any single mothers. And that right there within, you know, and if you go ahead and talk to a black woman about womb management, oh God, how dare you even speak to me like that? What are you worried about my womb? If I get pregnant, I get pregnant. If I don't have no husband, I don't have no husband. But as a collective member of the culture that is harmful, that is damaging, and that creates this bad narrative. But you cannot tell these grown folks like, hey, you know, maybe you should get married before you have children. Oh, God, well, why, what, what? I mean, you know, folks are like flipping out over that. Folks are flipping out. But essentially, you have so many black folks not I'm not talking to my progressive black folks and my progressive black folks. I love you. I appreciate you. You holding me down in the comments. You are fighting with these non progressive because I'm like folks are like, well, fo some folks will say something slick. Then boom, 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 boom. The progressives are like, yeah, because see, let, let's just keep it the buck. The progressive black people are tired of shit of the non progressive black people. Sick, 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 sick and tired of it. Just tired of the petty crap. I had someone because I used the word savage and hustlers like, well, you're not part of the rap. What, what, you know, savage finance has nothing to do with rap. Hustlers Kung Fu has nothing to do with rap, but they're trying to align because this is another thing that the black people, black people marketing department does is try to align themselves with successful black people after they become successful while they're on their way up. Mm -mm, nah, nope. I don't want nothing to do with you. Oh, now you a billionaire, Byron Allen. Let's sit down and have lunch. Call me. Essentially, this non-participation in successful behaviors is very damaging. And then there were some people and it's like, well, Glendon, you need therapy for your past hurts. Let me tell you, I got therapy. When I was a kid, Black folks were exceptionally mean to me. Facts. And for my progressive blacks and for my educated lames and for my nerds in the comments, you know 100% that I'm telling the truth. And I got my therapy. I don't need therapy now because I have the unimitable gall to speak the truth, to actually say that, hey, this is really wrong and stupid. That, that doesn't need therapy. You need therapy if you wanna keep this stuff under the sheets and not talking about it because it's harmful, it's corrosive, and it's damaging. So if you wanna like pretend that this stuff ain't happening, you're the one that needs therapy. You're the one that needs to sit in someone's chair and ask yourself, how come you don't wanna discuss the plights and the bad issues of black folks? Why don't you wanna talk about it? Why do you want to have this mythical thing that everything is okay? Kind of like that dog meme that's sitting in the room and the room is burning. The black community is burning. It ain't going well. And for all of you folks who could keep pretending like, oh yeah, it's, it's good. 
I asked you in the comments, I was like, okay, since you think that, why is this, you know, and there's a few people are like, okay, yeah, it is bad. It is bad because the culture is bad. And one part of the culture is there is a group of non-progressive black folks that refuse to hang out with non-blacks, to get to know non-blacks, to form fellowships and relationships with non-blacks. Right now, I have maybe 15 millionaire friends and out to 15, seven of them are white, two are Asian, and the others, the rest are black. This is my collective. This is the group of people that I know. This is the group of people that I can bounce ideas off. And once again, I'm gonna tell you, when you got money, you live differently than folks who don't have money. I will be addressing this on Savage Finance, which Savage Finance, because essentially, this channel is going to become a social commentary economic policy channel it is because someone was like i thought this channel was supposed to be about business and i couldn't find the comment i was like how come you never have commented on those 2500 videos about business see i can do a video talking about llc holding cups and it'll get like 500 1200 views and just die just die but i talk about this oh this thing would get views for months because that's what y'all get down with. That's the, that's the stuff you like. Because being accountable, being a business owner is hard. It's a challenge. And a lot of people don't want to step up to the challenge. A lot of people don't want to um, do the things that is required. But to my progressive blacks, keep the lights on. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep meeting people keep living the non-black life because how dare i say that the woman that may be for you make you happy may not be a black woman oh my god you know he, he's he's talking sacrilege oh my god the reality is if you are a successful educated articulate black man your dating pool is like that wide open it is a massive and if you want to limit yourself to 7% of the population, that's on you. Knock yourself out. Hope it works out for you. But I'm just saying for my progressive dudes, man, it's an amazing dating world out there for you. If you will take advantage of it. And sometimes as with my friend who was married to a black woman and went through a bitter, bitter divorce and he ended up marrying a white woman and he, he like got drunk one night. It was like, how come you didn't tell me it was like this good on this good side? His wife is submissive, kind, sweet. They don't get into fights. She don't pick fights. She's just a nice, sweet woman that respects men because she had a father. Oops. How about that, black women? How about that? You need some therapy because your daddy wasn't in your life? More than likely you do. Are you gonna get it? Nope. You just gonna keep, I'm a strong black woman. I don't need no therapy. I'm just gonna go out here and find a perfectly well-adjusted, mentally healthy person and tell him he needs therapy because I disagree with his views. But I ain't gonna get no therapy. No, 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 no. Yeah, that was for one person because I, I, I see you in the comments. And once again, you know the show, um, I forgot. It's got this guy, it's this FBI show. I forget, I forget. It's, it's, something, it's something about criminal minds. And I can profile you based upon your comments by the things you say and you don't say. And there's a lot of hurt, hurt people in there because I had the audacity to say what I said. This is the byproduct of financial freedom. I can say what I want to say. This is one of the reasons back in the day when the storage auction dudes, like the less successful white dudes, let's talk about that. They came after me. They used to have hangouts. It was like, why is he charging for information? He should be helping people for free. They came after me because they were jealous because I was doing way, way better than them. And also I was a forerunner. I was one of the founding fathers of the reseller community. Facts. I was one because when I came on YouTube, no one was talking about storage auctions. Very few people were. Dan Dotson from Storage Wars, he was on here. People were not talking about it. I was a forerunner. I was a trailblazer. And a lot of these white dudes could not stand it. I had to sue people to get them up off of me. And once I started suing people, oh yeah, the backup began. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. This dude will sue you. 
And I had one dude's wife call me crying, talking about they could not be a suit, they didn't have the money to afford her. And I told her, I said, you need to, you need to tell your husband to leave me the F alone. Cause he's been stupid. And I need to hear you tell him. She said, you need to leave him alone. If you don't leave him alone, I'm gonna divorce you. Cause I'm not going through this S with you. And he was like, okay, okay. And from that day on, he never messed with me anymore. That's what it took to get those fools off of me because see, like the black people marketing the department, it, they don't get a lot of pushback. They don't really get in trouble. You know, like, like this thing with black Twitter and black Instagram, all these other crazy, crazy things. But I'm here to say, if you're a progressive black folks, keep doing what you're doing. Keep going out, opening new doors, creating new businesses. I love the fact that there are so many young black people getting into tech. It's new, it's, it's fresh, and they're making money. I love that. I love that. I love that. Because essentially, you get in tech, you can become a millionaire before you're 30. But the old heads, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Because see, the black people marketing department has many consistencies. It constitutes of the old head black marketing departments, the new jack swing black. It's it's a mess. It's a mess. And the black people marketing department probably gonna have fun with this. Don't you be hanging out with no white people. Don't you be hanging out with no Asian people. Don't you be hanging out. If, if I sound hurt because I have the audacity to tell the truth, you should look in the mirror and check yourself and ask yourself, why does the truth threaten you so much? Why does the truth create problems for you? Because all I'm speaking is the truth. That's the thing. And the progressive black folks in the comments, amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen. You know I'm talking the truth. And you, you, you going ahead and you fighting for your boy. I appreciate it. I appreciate it because once again, the ghetto hood culture is the largest demographic of the black collective. It is not the smallest, like some of you, well, it's just, a, no, it's not. It's not small. Why is it you can go to a black community and walk in the grocery store and literally 70, 80% of the women that you run into will be single mothers? That's not small. That is a large collective. That is a large segment. It's not small at all. And also, I may start talking about my, you know, funny things with dealing with black women. Because someone said, oh, I put on here that I would never date a black woman. I've never said that. Never said that at all. And how do I know how it goes down with dating black women if I never dated a black woman? I remember I was dating this chick. She used to work for the U.S. Treasury. And it was one of the best relations I had because she was weird and awkward like I was. And she, we used to have these talks about how being other black folks, she, she said, people in my own family would say things to me like, just so disrespectful, so distasteful. And this is the thing, black folks, you gotta stop speaking this crap to young children. You gotta stop telling them that stuff because you're, you, you're harming them. It, it's not good. But, and we're not even gonna talk about the incest. That's a whole nother video. But that's all I got for you guys. So for the progressive black folks who want to move to other heights, cause like I said, I got all my corporate game from a white dude named Fred. The reality, that's facts. It wasn't some black dude named Hashib, Habib. Wasn't, just facts. So go below, get the um, 30 days, 2,500. Get the hustler's mindset, pimp your mind for success. And also, once again, sign up for the Oxygen Banking app. It's pretty swick. They do not offer credit, just to be a buck about that, but they do offer cash back on the debit card at Walmart, uh, Rideshare, Gas, and a few other things. So that's a really nice little benefit, and it's a super slick app. And also, it should be part of your banking. So with that, I will see you guys in the next one.